Hey awesome people, welcome to So Addicts Halloween Edition. Ooh. <laughs> I hope you guys really had a great week and as you saw from the intro, I'm gonna be making the Pennywise costume from the It movie. I absolutely love the movie. It was just so graphically, aesthetically pleasing. So I decided to go as Pennywise for Halloween and I was really skeptical about doing this look because I just figured everybody was gonna, like everybody and everyone was gonna do this look, but I decided to challenge myself creatively and challenge you guys creatively by putting a different twist on mine. All the key details from Pennywise's costume are in my costume as well, but I glammed up mine a little bit so it looks more like a, I don't know, glamorous clown, if you would say. <laughs> Not as evil as Pennywise. But just to go into the fabrics that you need for this project, you wanna get an off-white or white um, fabric or material that has a little bit of stretch. The stretch is really gonna hug your body really nicely. And this is a cotton fabric with 3% spandex, just to give you guys an idea of what fabrics to buy. It's also um, medium weight, so it has a really nice texture. And to give this a really nice contrast, I also got a beige slash crim, crim, crim fabric. So this gives it a really, really nice contrast. And uh, it also represents the frills and the ruffles on Pennywise's costume as well. So aside from that, I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. If you're new to my channel, do not hesitate to push, hit that subscribe button. And if you just wanna see more of this beautiful face or tag me in any of your fantastic photos, do not hesitate to do that at Dami at Nike X on Instagram. And I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. So the first thing you wanna do is put your fabric on fold. Then you're gonna grab any of your button-down t-shirts and neatly pin down the middle of the shirt. So you wanna make sure to pin this so your fabric or your shirt stays in place. Then we're also gonna fold our shirt neatly in half. And again, you could also take some pins and pin your shirts together so they stay neatly in half. So now that we've done that, you wanna take your shirt and place it right at the fold of the fabric. So feel free to put a couple of pins just to hold your shirt neatly in place. So now we're ready to trace out all the parts we need for our costume. So the first thing you wanna trace out is your neckline. So I'm actually tracing out my neckline with the neckband right there. So I'm tracing out the neckband because I want my neckline to be pretty high. So after your neckline, you also wanna trace out your shoulder and when you're done, measure the width or chest of your shirt. And my chest was a little bigger than my actual chest. So I just went in on the chest a little bit. So then you also want to trace the curve of your armhole. So make sure to follow the curve of your shirt for your armhole. And now that we're done with this, we're going to move on to the waist measurement. So in order to determine your waist, you pretty much want to find the place that is pretty much smaller than the rest of your side seams on your shirt. So when I measured mine, mine was about 8 inches. So I do need a waistband for my costume, which is an inch and a half. So I'm going to be measuring an inch and a half less than eight inches, which was six and a half. So I measured six and a half for my side seams. And then I traced out my side seams and you can take off all the pins and we're pretty much just going to straighten out our lines. So make sure to give your neckline a nice curve, straighten out your shoulders, straighten out your side seams as well. And you could also use a French curve for your armhole to give a really nice curve. And for the hem, we're just going to be straightening that out. And when you're pretty much done, you just want to add your seam allowances all around your pattern. So I actually forgot to taper my waist, so I went back and did this. So you want to just get your waist measurement divided by four and measure your waist out from the fold. And when you're done, you just cut your pattern out. So now moving on to the back, our back is going to be cut in two instead of unfold. So I just went ahead and drew a straight line on my fabric. So then you also want to grab your back and of course this time we're going to be folding our shirt towards the back. So you can go ahead and pin it just like we did before and we're going to be placing our shirt right there on that line. So I went ahead and just traced my shirt out with the same measurement just as the front, traced my armhole and now I'm just chewing up all my lines. So once I have my lines chewed up, I'm also going to be adding my seam allowances. 
So again, your measurements are pretty much the same and don't forget to add seam allowance at that line we drew earlier on. So now we're going to be tracing our, our sleeve. So I pretty much did the same thing with a straight line and I'm just going to be placing this edge of my sleeve right there on that straight line. Pin it to make sure that everything is laying neatly and we're also going to be tracing the curve of our sleeve so we can attach it to our top. So now I'm measuring how long I want my sleeve to be. So I decided to make my sleeves about 20 inches long because I'm going to be having an attachment at the bottom as you guys saw earlier. And I just traced out all the parts of my sleeve, made sure all my curves were really nice and traced out all my lines and also added my seam allowances. So you want to repeat the sleeve process twice. So then I went ahead and attached my front to my back, shoulders to shoulders, and side seams to side seams, leaving my back open. So now we're going to be making our waistband for our costume. So you want to measure how long your front is, side seams to side seams, and also how long your back is, just half your back from the center back all the way to the side seams. So when you have these two measurements in mind, take your fabric and place it on fold. So I just went ahead and just drew a straight line on my fabric and I'm measuring half of what my front measurement was so whatever your front measurement was just measure that out in half and I want my waistband to be about an inch and a half wide so I'm measuring the inch and a half from that line and I'm just squaring that off all the way down to the bottom so make sure to add your seam allowances and just true up all your lines for just your front waistband so for the back, we don't want our back to be on fold, so we're just going to be cutting that in two, and you pretty much want to do the same thing with your back measurement and adding seam allowances all around and just cutting out your waistband. So now we have our front and our two backs, so you want to attach these at both side seams. So I went ahead and just attached this on my sewing machine and now we're going to be sewing it to our main fabric, side seams connected to side seams and you just want to pin that all across and we're going to be sewing this down on the sewing machine. After sewing, don't forget to press this down so it looks really nice and neat. So the next step is to pretty much just cut out a piece of fabric that's about 8 inches wide and make it pretty much as long as you want. I just made mine as long as my selvage to my selvage was. And I also went ahead and cut the same thing in the lace fabric but made it one inch longer. So eight inches and nine inches. So now we're just gonna be finishing up the edge of our main fabric. And you wanna just finish up the edge like a jean hem. And you also wanna place your white fabric on top of the lace fabric. And now we're just going to be gathering those two fabrics together. So make sure to place your stitches at about a five and you just want to sew that all the way to the bottom. So once we've done this, we're going to be gathering our two main fabrics together. So make sure to just use this method and gather all your fabric together to the length of your waist. So I gathered mine and it's pretty much to the length of my waist. And the only thing that's left to do is pretty much just attach it to my waistband at about a half inch seam allowance. So I just went ahead and pinned this all the way around my waistband, making sure it fits nicely. And you just want to sew that on the sewing machine. So after sewing it on the machine, it should look something like this. It's peeking out with the lace at the bottom and the main fabric at the top. So now we're going to be sewing our sleeves together. So you want to put your sleeves right sides to right sides, sew it all the way down here and down here as well. So I actually went ahead and sewed my whole sleeve together, attaching all my seams and attaching the bell sleeve attachment at the end. You're basically going to do the same thing you did for the bottom of the top, but a pretty much a shorter version. Mine was about a three inches attachment. So do the same thing just like the top. So now we have our top and we're going to be attaching our sleeve to the top. So you want to match left sides to left sides and right sides to right sides. And just pretty much walk your sleeve all the way to the top and sew this neatly on the sewing machine. So we went ahead and attached 
our sleeves to the sewing machine and the next thing to pretty much do is putting our zipper so I have an invisible zipper but you could use any kind of zipper and you want your zipper to be about 20 to 22 inches long or as long as you could have it and you can sew that on the sewing machine neatly as well so now the next phase is to pretty much cut out a piece of lace fabric that's about six inches uh, wide and pretty much uh, any uh, length and I cut this out twice one with the scallop edges and one without because I just really wanted the scallop edges but you didn't have to do that and I just kind of gathered this on the sewing machine so we're gonna be attaching this to our neckline so you want to gather it where you can still move your gathers around depending on how wide your neckline is so I just pinned it all the way around making sure that my gathers actually go around my neckline so you also want to sew this down on the sewing machine just like this and when it comes to the seam allowance that is peeking out we're going to be folding this over and actually top stitching it from the front so again you want to fold your seam allowance over just like this and top stitching it from the front on the main fabric so after sewing this, we're going to be setting our top aside for a little while and I actually have my pants all sewn up. I do have a step-by-step -step video showing you how to make this pant, so make sure to check out my other video. And for now, I have my pants sewn up and this pant is actually cropped just like the other ones from the other video. So I'm just going ahead to make sure that my hem is even all the way around from my front all the way to the back so i just measured eight inches from my knee because this again is a cropped pant so i'm measuring eight inches from my knee and marking it all the way around my flare so you just want to go ahead and kind of curve or rather draw a curve around your hem and pretty much just cutting that out with a nice curve all the way around make sure to repeat this for the other pant leg as well so the next thing you also want to do is grab another piece of lace and make this as long as you pretty much can and make it about six inches wide so then you also want to grab your pant leg and we're actually going to be sewing this lace to our pant leg so i'm just going to fold my lace neatly in half and place it a little bit right under my flare and we're just going to top stitch that from the front all around with our lace so you just want to walk that all the way on the sewing machine this is what it should look like when it's all sewn up so now we have our finished pants and our finished top so remember these little details on the costume in the original movie so we're actually gonna be putting these on our costume too so I went ahead and grabbed these beautiful pretty tassels from Joann's and we're going to be sewing this at our knees and sleeves. So you just want to place these tassels or whatever kind of red tassels you have around your knee and also at your sleeve. So when you uh, pin this all the way around making sure that it fits and we're just going to be pretty much just hand stitching them on our uh, pants so just make sure to do a quick running stitch all the way around on your pant so this is what it should look like when it's all sewn up at the knee and also sewn at the sleeves as well so it really adds a nice flair and also looks very original so now this is more of an optional thing for you guys but if you want it to look even more original we're gonna add clown noses so i just grabbed these uh, red balls they were actual clown noses but you could just use any red balls and we're just gonna stitch it right at the middle of the fabric making sure that each of them is uh equally distant from each other and we're just gonna hand sew that on our top making sure that it's held pretty nicely and when you're done with this, everything looks great and your costume is pretty much ready to be worn.
needs to stop doing that. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And if you just want to scroll down, leave me a couple of words about what you're going as for Halloween. If you're going something a little bit sexy or grungy, I really want to hear what you guys think about this video or what you're going as for Halloween. And do not hesitate to tag me in any of those awesome, fantastic Halloween photos on Instagram at Dami Eddie Nike X. If you love this video, do not say hesitate to give me a big thumbs up and scroll over there and push that subscribe button to see more videos from me. I hope you guys enjoy and have a fantastic Halloween. I'm going to be having a fantastic Halloween because I'm going as a sexy Pennywise. <laughs> I hope you guys have a fantastic Halloween and I hope to catch you Halloween So Addicts next week. Ooh, oh my God. Bye.